Hi there. The next series we're going to be doing is concerning books about the Rhodesian Bush War. Uh, I first visited Rhodesia in 1976. Um, I'd been down in South Africa and um, I was invited up to Rhodesia, um, mainly in Bulawayo, which is uh, Matabili land. But I did spend a couple of days up in the capital, uh, Salisbury. And I, I was just absolutely knocked out by the hospitality of the Rhodesian people. Um, you know, they had every reason to dislike um, Brits. You know, um, we were giving them a hard time politically and so on. But they really, really um, made, a, made me very, very welcome. And they um, had um, um, very, very real ties back to the UK. And... Um, one of the things that uh, struck me was the, um, the, the the way the society was. For example, um, uh, teenagers would get to the feet when adults came in the room. You know, it was very polite, uh, very high standard of education and so on. Um, and the following year, I, I went back and it was uh, to Salisbury. And during that time, uh, a book had been published. Now, there weren't really many books about the Rhodesian um, conflict. There, there was a history of the Rhodesianized infantry, which, which I'd read, um, w which was quite detailed, but it, 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 it didn't cover the bulk of, of the actual Bush War. Uh, and there was a, a book called Don't Die in the Bundu, which was a survival manual, which was issued to the military. And I, I'd actually, I was given a copy of that, which was stamped um, with the um, the unit stamp of C Squadron uh, Rhodesian SAS. And um, I get, actually gave that to Lofty for his collection of survival books. Um, but in, in 77, when I was there, a book had just been published, and it's this one. And unfortunately, the dust cover's missing. Uh, as as I, I loaned it to people and so on, it um, it got torn. But it's contact, called contact, a tribute to those who serve Rhodesia. And I heard about it and uh, tried to get a copy, and it had sold out, completely sold out. Uh, you couldn't get it. Um, I, I, one of the reasons was it had... Uh, the Roll of Honor at the back, and Rhodesians um, were very much um, um, wanted to have a memorial to their family members that had been lost. Uh, I asked in a, in a bookshop in Salisbury, and the lady there, who was originally uh, from the UK, sold me her copy. She said, okay, I, you know, you're going to take this back to the UK, show them over there just what it's like here. And uh, she got a copy later on, so she sold me this one. And um, for its time, it, 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 it's um, fairly comprehensive. It covers all arms of the, um, the uh, units involved in the conflict. Uh, it starts off with a lot of the history of Rhodesia, Cecil Rhodes and so on, who at the moment is a controversial figure and they want to pull statues to him down. But... You know, I was brought up on stories of um, uh, explorers and people, people who, um, you know, braved uh, terrible conditions and, and did amazing things. And he certainly fitted that mold. And uh, I don't like the revisionist history that's going on at the moment. Uh, so a lot of that goes into UDI, uh, Unilateral Declaration of Independence, where... Um, our UK Prime Minister was Harold Wilson at the time, who um, didn't fight in the war. And uh, Ian Smith, who was the Rhodesian Prime Minister, had been um, a hurricane pilot in, in the Air Force, um, Royal Air Force. So a bit of a contrast. Uh, I'm just going through it for some of the parts here. Uh, it gives all the personalities, the guys at the top, the generals and, the, and so on. Um, the first main section uh, is about the police, which was called the British South Africa Police. It was still called that, 
because uh, that, that's how it had been set up in the time of Rhodes. And um, pretty um, interesting section on that. All the different subunits of the South African police, uh, the British South African police, the uh, support unit, um, special branch, um, part two, police anti terrorist unit, um, and so on. Uh, the um, canines, all sorts of things. Re really goes into it. And, uh, you know, policing a, a, a war zone, basically a war zone, um, is obviously a, a difficult task. Uh, police actually had primacy, a bit like in Northern Ireland, where, uh, particularly at the beginning of the conflict, they were in charge and directed the efforts. Later on, they had a, a joint command, which um, covered that. Then we go into the army, and um, it's probably the first book to reveal the Salute Scouts. Picture of Ron Reed Daly and a picture of some hard-looking guys. Um, thing is, those guys were, were not Salute Scouts. That, that, that was a picture of, of um, some um, trackers uh, that were not in the Scouts at the time. But um, it's because the Salute Scouts in 77 was still a highly, highly secret unit. And any reference to what they did in this book was all to do with tracking, and that was the cover for it. Um, there's a little bit about C Squadron, SAS. Um, obviously, the Air Force, um, the Hunter Squadrons, the Canberra Squadrons, the um, Helicopter Squadrons, and so on, who all really helped to win so, so many of the uh, battles in the bush. Big section of the book is the citations for different decorations. At the time the book was written, the highest decoration, military decoration that had been awarded was the Silver Cross of Rhodesia. And uh, there's a couple of uh, Air Force guys and um, one of the Salu Scouts, uh, Dale Collett, who um, was severely injured in the contact. Uh, and was a Silver Cross winner. As I say, at the time, that was the highest. Later on, um, the the highest decoration, Grand Cross of Valor, uh, there were two awards, but we'll talk about them in another book, I'm sure. But then, as I mentioned before, you've got the role of honour, and um, it, it's really sad to see um, all the young lives that were taken. And... Um, it's uh, it's still an interesting book. Some of the other books we'll be talking about go into far, far more detail on the individual units and so on. Talking about fire force operations, uh, pseudo operations and so on. But I really treasured that book. Um, uh, and I was really grateful to the lady who let me buy a copy. And it stands, as it says, as a tribute to those who served Rhodesia. Country that doesn't exist anymore. And... Uh, in my opinion, the, the world is a, a worse off place for its passing.